In town, you're the law. Out here, it's me. Here's your look at the brand new Hyatt Toys First Blood Exquisite Super Series John Rambo 112 Scale Previews Exclusive. A soldier haunted by the memories of Vietnam. He was once the perfect killing machine. Now he's finding a place to eat around, but instead finds an overzealous small town sheriff. Hai is proud to announce the Rambo 112 scale action figure from First Blood. Hai Toys Exquisite Super is a 112 scale high end action figure series dedicated to polishing every detail and shape only to pursue higher quality and better experience. Rambo may be bringing them the war, but it's Haya that's bringing us the figure. Just before, of course, we get a closer look at the First Blood Exquisite Super Series John Rambo 112 scale, I'd like to thank the folks over at Haya that did provide this early sample we could have a look at. The figure is already pre-ordered on many online sites with a release date of April 2024, so he should be coming out very soon. Ram Rambo, though, First Blood's Rambo, stands actually six and a quarter inches in height, or the figure is 16 centimeters tall. Seeing as Haya has missed no details, it seems, with John Rambo, I'm going to do my best to miss no details in this review, starting first with hopefully a very in-depth size comparison. The easiest one I can first start with is an exquisite mini. This just happens to be because we don't have a Rambo of this size. Here's what the figure looks like with the remake Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface. Speaking of Leatherface, though, I'm sure probably one of the questions you may be asking is if this is a 112 scale, how does it scale with a 112 series? from the folks over at Mesco. Well, I did want to bring in a uh, Leatherface, specifically the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the first Leatherface. And you can see like size-wise, they actually scale in pretty well with one another. So if we don't happen to get a Rambo from Mesco, and we certainly don't get a Leatherface from of Haya, of course you can have the two figures displayed pretty nicely with one another. And lastly, as well, speaking of Rambo, we can also bring in one we got from NECA Toys. This happens to be also John Rambo from First Blood. <laughs> Tackling first, the display stand that comes included with the figure. John Rambo has his namesake printed along the top of this. You may be looking at the base and thinking, well, why is it so thick like this? And there's a reasoning for that. The top of the base, though, does have this molded here and down below in the same molded plastic as the rest of it. There is also a hole up the top corner that you can then take yourself the adjustable neck and this can plug into the back of this. Before we plug that in, you may be looking at this and thinking, that's a little tad too long, I think, to accommodate John Rambo. He's not like he's leaping in the air that high. Don't worry, though, any one of these adjustable links, and by the way, these do all adjust like this. Just above that, though, there's actually a little seam line that you can detach the parts that you don't want to use and shorten the length of the neck. Uh, likely, though, if I'm planning to display them with the neck, I might just take this part off and leave this as the part with the display base and then just leave all the rest of it off and then just take the adjustable, you know, the waist clip. And then that will just go on to the end of it. Uh, I'm sure they're probably going to be using this moving forward with the other Super Series figures. It just happens to be the fact that John Rambo comes included with a very long one. But again, you can just reduce this to whatever size length that you really want. And then this just plugs onto the back of it and you got yourself instantly an adjustable display stand for the figure. Now, the reason why it's actually thick like this, first of all, we're going to take the neck off here. If you look to the back, there's a little lip right here. You can easily get your finger behind and you just pull this whole part off. And inside there's storage space for all the included accessories. The fact that John Rambo has as many accessories as he does, there's then a good place to store them if you don't plan to have them displayed with the figure. So really, ideally, you could have the figure then on top of the base and all his extra accessories stored inside. High has really been thinking this one out. There's also as well an included baggie. So you can take, again, all those extra things that you're not going to be displaying with John and just store them inside the bag, wrap up the bag, and then basically very simply tuck it then into the, the actual storage space and then put the lid on top of it. I wouldn't not put on, I'm not going to put this lid on just yet because there is one other lid that also comes included with it. It's this one here. Instead of actually having just the peg placed on the back, they've now also given us an additional top piece that has then storage space, take basically the adjustable neck and then being able to move it all around in actually nine different places. So instead of having it just in the back, you can have it in the middle, you can have it off to the side, wherever you decide you want to have it stored. I prefer really of the two to have the figure displayed with this face plate. Just because, again, like, I don't need necessarily that many holes on the actual top of the base. And I do actually like, again, the idea that the figure's character's name is actually featured on the front. Something I'm sure is going to be also done with future figures of this Super Series line that we're looking at from Hyatt Toys.
Which then brings us to the figure's accessories. And this is, I feel, where John Rambo benefits the most. Hyatt Toys has thrown in everything you could possibly think of with the inclusion for this figure. He also comes included with a booklet. And the booklet is only really there just to kind of show you things like where the magazine can be stored on the AR-15. How where you can install as well the, the belt storage there of the ammunition. And then on the back as well, how to attach the knife onto the end of the spear. All of which we'll kind of do our best to kind of cover off in this review. Put that off to the side. The figure, like I said, comes with a lot of things. He comes with, first of all, a lot of hands. Uh, right now, I've actually taken a liberty of already swapping out some of the hands in favor of getting the figure prepped for the beginning of this review. He sort of did start things, I think, with closed fist, if memory serves me correctly. I mean, for the fact that he has as many things as he does, I'm not likely going to be displaying the figure with closed fist, but he does have those. He does also have varying different grips, uh, more suitable like for, for like holding the end stock or the end uh, handle of the guns, for example, or the knife or the spear. He also comes included, again, a slightly wider grip C clamp hand, and then he also comes with a series of trigger finger hands, suitable for again holding any one of the weapons that he wields. Has, like I said, quite a lot of hands to work with. But changing out the hands is pretty simple, also, as well. If you're pretty familiar with like smaller 112 scale figures, it's exactly the same. You're basically just going to hold on to the forearm, wiggle the hand carefully off, and then you're going to find the hand that you want to use. So let's grab, maybe we'll grab this hand right here, for example and just wiggle it back on the post. The only thing about it though, is with the post being so small like this, it's very prone to kind of wiggling back and forth. So you kind of have to hold it in somewhat of one place and then just kind of wiggle the hand to get it back in place. But John Rambo, like I said, changing out the hands, it's not hard, it's just more so kind of, you just gotta be patient with them. I mean, it's like anything when it comes to 112 scale figure hands, you just gotta make sure, of course, you're just not putting a lot of pressure against them. So let's look at some of the weapons. I guess we could probably have started with the knives and things, but let's start first with the guns. The figure, first of all, comes with the Remington 700. I think, though, in the movie, it's slightly lighter colored than the brown that we get traded here. You've got, of course, the scope there on the top. A really nice molded gun. I'm probably not going to be displaying that with John Rambo, but again, I appreciate the fact the figure comes included with it. He also comes included, as mentioned in the instruction guide, with the AR-15. Now, the neat thing about the AR-15 is the fact that it, first of all, has a shoulder strap built onto the bottom of it. It's attached by very small clips. I don't know if you guys can actually see that or not. So you just want to be careful when you're strapping this around the back of Rambo. But what it does, though, have is it does have a removable magazine. You just carefully wiggle this off and it just detaches. You can't quite make out, though, that there's a bullet on the end of it. But the fact it does actually have a removable magazine for something as small size like this is a really nice touch. But by far my favorite accessory, and probably many, many people who watch the First Blood, uh, First Blood movie probably would be a big fan of this one as well. He comes with the M16 machine gun. And anything like that in the movie, it does also have the swing forward a little support. So you can also rest it this way as well. The neat thing also that they've done with this is that with the actual machine gun, it comes with a series of uh, like ammunition or bullet uh, bullet belts, if that ammunition belt. Uh, this one actually is one specifically for wrapping around his arm. It's not going to serve much of a purpose right now because the way I've got the figure dressed, you can actually take the tarp off. You can take the tunic that he's wearing right now. That actually comes off. But this actually, you can take the, the belt, the ammunition belt, and that basically just feeds through the back of the M60. And again, this ideally, we'll come back to this, this is going to basically wrap around a Rambo's arm. Uh, the figure also has a slightly smaller version of this. So if, if he's already exhausted all the ammunition, you basically would have a slightly smaller belt that's just hanging off the edge like this. He also comes with larger ones. Now, these would be all ones that are going to be going around his body after, again, we take off what he's wearing right now. These are all done in very soft plastic. Nicely painted, again, for the fact that this is just basically an included accessory. But you get a lot of these, actually. You get two smaller ones, and you get two larger ones. Again, you can just have these wrapped around the figure's body. We're going to have to come back to those because of just, again, the way he's dressed right now. The figure also comes included with a tiny little walkie-talkie. Now, this is part of the category of things that likely would be lost if you're not too careful. The walkie-talkie is made of fairly soft plastic, nicely detailed for, again, the size that it actually is. And then the figure finally comes included, which probably would have been the thing I should have really started with when looking at the accessories, but I just couldn't resist looking at the guns. The figure comes included with the makeshift spear that he has in the movie. Uh, right now, it's basically just the, the actual stick, but what he does also have included as well is, first of all, his hunting knife. Whether you decide to display this with the shield or you rather just display this instead with Rambo undressed, you know, of course, once we take everything off, this will go onto the end of the spear. But first, you'll have to do is take this piece right here. This is the part, of course, that he wraps the end of the spear off. Uh, when you're looking at it, well, first of all, if you look at the bottom of it, you can see it doesn't go all the way through. That's the side that's actually going to hold the knife. You probably can also see, too, that one hole is a little bit bigger than the other. See, this one's a little bit larger than this one next to it. The larger of the two actually is the thing that goes on the end of the spear. 
just fit it over top. The only thing I would worry about though is, you know, I'm probably not going to be doing it many times after this review anyways, but I think if you're putting it on and you're removing it frequently, it may start to flake the paint off, I'm guessing. Uh, other than that, I mean, again, like I just like the idea that they included it. And then you would take, of course, yourself the knife and the knife, you take the end of the handle and it's going to fit then in the smaller hole. And doing this, you want to really be careful. It helps to really twist this back and forth to slide it all the way down. Don't resist any urge, of course, to push down on the blade. The blade is soft plastic, but you don't really want to cause any stress marks or even potentially break the blade. And then you can have them with the makeshift spear. Now, I had the figure already prepped at the beginning of this review with the, the hands I did change out. And again, you just take the hand and hold the spear this way, or you can have them dual wielding it like I did at the beginning of this review. Very nice, the fact that they included all those accessories. The last thing that he has also included with him as well, I guess we'll start first with the defaulted head sculpt, or that's the head sculpt I'm going to consider the default before we move on to more interesting looking head sculpts. The, the head that we start with is more just a neutral expression. He gets progressively more angry throughout the movie. He's probably going to get more progressively angrier throughout the course of this review as well. First, just with starting with the 112 scale head sculpt that we're starting with, like look at the likeness though of John Rambo. It's perfect. He also has the little, you know, of course, what's left behind of his headband. The headband would be just on the top there. But I I think they've landed right away an excellent likeness of Sylvester Stallone. Whether you're a big fan of the original First Blood or you like the follow-up film First Blood Part 2, I kind of now, I feel like Alien and Aliens. Always liked Aliens as a kid. I was like First Blood Part 2. Still like First Blood Part 2. But there's something very charming about the First Blood, first very First Blood, that I always seem to kind of go back to as kind of my favorite of the, of the series. As you can see right now, he's got his... Again, kind of sort of his, his top that he wears in the beginning of the movie. He basically just wraps himself around this and then ties it off with a cord on the front. They have nicely done this. I mean, it's a little crispy down below just because they've added some additional paint down below. But like the material that they've used is actually a really good quality. Now, I haven't yet done this just because I know myself I'm not capable of tying a knot that small. What it looks to be the case is that the front half of this basically is just folded in against the back half and they basically just use the this, this string to kind of keep everything together like it would have been in the movie. Knowing that, I haven't yet taken this off just because I knew that once I took this knot off, look how small this is, there would be no way I would be getting it back in place. Now, that's fine for me anyways because I really would rather have the figure displayed the way he looks later into the movie that I like this, I love this, but I'm just ultimately going to be taking this off anyways. So I did hold off reservations of actually doing this until I started to hit the record button. And we're just going to carefully remove the cord here. Now, I can't think of any other thing I would probably have done differently other than obviously what they've done here. The neat thing, well, the, what I like about it though is I sort of tested the waters early before I hit the record. It does look like at least you can loosen up the knot and you don't have to untie it completely. So if you're somebody that's lousy with tying knots like I am tying knots, uh, you can just loosen it up just enough to slide it down his belt. And just slide it over top of his waist here. Slide it all the way down. And then once you get down to the legs, I mean, it's just smooth sailing. And we'll just drop it all the way down. And we'll just put the cord to the side. Uh, his little string belt, I'll probably just put back in the bag. And hey, now that we actually have ourselves a little storage space, you don't have to put anything back really in the packaging. You would just store it inside the bag that comes included with the display base. Again, they really did think of everything. So like this just, again, is, yeah, it's one half and it's folded over, over top of itself. And you just literally would just... Uh, take this completely off and then you would just i guess we should really start with the head sculpt first we're going to pop the head off and i've already popped the head off a couple of times to change out some of the heads that i'm going to stick with i think moving forward when i have this figure on display the one other thing i was really kind of worried about is the tunic that he has here or what would you call it, a smock the, the thing that i was worried about though is it was going to leave staining behind now being the fact that they would have stained the material here i was worried that that was going to leave all these little splotch marks all over the, the the tank top basically he's wearing underneath here and it doesn't seem to be the case it looks like it's pretty clean i mean you guys can see for yourself but we're just going to take this off completely we're going to put that off to the side and again i'm going to probably store it with the rest of the accessories and then what we get underneath here oh this is nice to see I was wondering if this was going to be actually plastic, and it turns out that this is also material as well. There's still a, additional articulation. Of course, we'll all talk about that more in a moment. This, by the way, is also soft plastic that they've used. Uh, likely, they probably would have been using probably an overlay body over top of what their articulation figure would be underneath. Yeah, so like this is all soft plastic. So then we get John Rambo as he as appears a little bit later in the movie. One thing that's nice, nice now to see is that they also have a little storage space, a sheath to store his knife. So we can just put the figure down here for a second, take the knife from his from his spear, carefully, carefully remove it. And now there's a storage place on the side. You wouldn't have been able to see that. I didn't even see that. I assumed it was probably there, but again, I didn't want to take it off just yet. Yeah, there's a nice little storage space on the side to store his hunting knife. 
It look, looks a little out of place, doesn't it, without his head sculpt. So other than the head that we've already had a look at, we're going to put decapitated John Rambo down here for a second. Unlike, uh, starting first, we started with this head sculpt, which again is really good. But then we also get this one here as well, where it obviously looks like John Rambo by this point. He's a little bit more ticked off. Still has the bandana entrails there on the side. Painted paint on this is just fantastic. I can't believe for a figure this small how well the figure's actually been painted. Again, you got the grimmest face, you got the neutral expression, but then if you want to take it to the full extreme, he also has this one. And this one does now also feature some additional blood dripping down the side. The hardest thing is now just to choose which is the head of the which is the best head sculpt. Now, honestly, I probably would either go with this one, the neutral, or I probably would go with this one here. Let's, you know what, we'll go with this head sculpt. So taking that, we're gonna plug it back onto the ball joint. And that's something I also I want to talk about for the articulation, I guess we'll just quickly mention it now, is that not only does the figure have a ball joint here, but he also has a ball joint at the base of the neck. This thing, this guy is crazy. Yeah, so you get some additional articulation there also as well. Looking at the rest of the figure's body, uh, very muscular, obviously, build. I, I would almost even say they glorified this build. Like, I think it's a little bit a little bit leaner than that in the movie, but very nicely painted. The, the way they also have handled the denim jeans here, very scuffed up and dirty on the back. He's got his belt, of course, that wraps around the front. Belt buckle there on the front. It's not really even so much belt buckle. It's just the part of the belt that loops straight through. Fairly dirty looking jeans. And then down below, of course, he's got his hiking boots. Very nicely done all around. He doesn't have peggles on the undersides of his feet. It's not a it's not a big thing, obviously, but I kind of wish in a way they could have included peggles on the bottoms of their feet. So like if you didn't want to have to use a display stand like the big, you know, one that's gonna fit around his waist, you could just then attach this onto the display stand. Or hey, why not? You can also attach it onto like one of the exquisite mini display stands, which would be using slightly smaller smaller pegs. They probably could have done that, they just didn't do that though. Uh, all in all, though, it's a good looking figure. I feel like he's a little wide here in the waist, but other than that, like I'm really, really happy with how this guy's turned out. And, and seeing as this is only like the first time we've looked at it, and it, like one of the exquisite super series figures, I can certainly see where they could definitely take this line moving forward with movie characters. I mean, John Rambo, again, looks awesome. Just want to make sure I get him all the way onto the ball joint. There we go. There we go. For the figure's articulation, starting first with his head sculpt, once again, it's going to be on that ball joint. So it rotates the head all the way around. It looks up, it looks down, and it moves back and forth. I think the moving up and down, though, isn't so much the ball joint that's attached to his head, but I think it's rather the ball joint that's at the base of his neck. That gives him a much more additional, well, it gives him a lot more movement when it comes to his, his head moving up and down. You can see a lot of it more is in the neck than the actual ball joint here in the head. Uh, the shoulders come out at 90 degrees. I guess they probably could go a little higher than that as well. You can take these arms and rotate them all the way around. You definitely, though, notice, though, as uh, I'm just getting the arms back in place here. Uh, one thing I did notice, though, is while moving this around, it does squeak a little bit because this is softer plastic. This is harder plastic. It, it, you kind of feel that there's a little bit of grind happening here with some friction rubbing against the plastic, the softer plastic that they used. You know, again, like, I just love the idea that they would have actually used, like, a rubber overlay. I just hope, like, this doesn't start to split, depending on how often I'm going to be moving the arms. But for the arms, though, they do swivel back and forth. The figure does have a double hinge on the elbow. That's fantastic. And the hands do rotate all the way around. Now, we've already looked at the fact the figure does seem to have an upper torso crunch. You can also probably make out as well. He's got some sculpted in their abs. So they left no muscle untouched here. It also does rock back and forth as well. And I guess you could rotate it too. I don't know how far the shirt does actually tuck down. You probably could pull the shirt out if you wanted to. I kind of like the idea of having it more tucked in. You know, again, like the only thing looking at this... I think his legs are okay. I think his arms are okay. I feel like maybe he's just a little too wide here in the torso. Now, maybe have some of that may have had also to do with the fact that they're using a, probably a body that they're going to be putting overlays over, different overlays, depending on what Super Series figures that they're just making at the time. But he does come across a little on the thicker side here. But again, like that's that's a small little, that's a small thing depending on how good this, you know, compared to how good this figure actually turned out to be. He's got a swiveler there at the top of the thigh. The legs again move forward. They move back. He has a what seems to be a double hinge on the knee. And then he's got some really decent ankle articulation. I just want to bring this up so you guys can actually see. Even though really his boot goes pretty far up there, he still manages to get some decent ankle articulation. Like they made the, the boots soft enough in plastic that still gives him a pretty decent level of articulation. I couldn't be any happy with this figure. Now, Haya did actually send over not only First Blood, but they also sent over First Blood Part 2 and First Blood Part 3. So we're going to be looking at a series of different Rambos through the many different films, of course, he appears in. Loving this line, i got to say, so far. Not only did they throw everything into this when it came to his included accessories, starting first, with, of course, with a display stand that actually does house all the additional accessories inside. You know what? Also, let's just take one of the bandoliers, too. Would you still call this a, a weapon bandolier? I guess you would. Let's just go ahead and pop the head off right now. It seems so incomplete without John Rambo actually having one of these. 
whether you decide you want to use more than one or not. And we'll just plug that back in place. There we go. I can finish my train of thought a little bit better now having that across Rambo's torso. You know, again, like for this being the start of what I'm sure will be a long line of super series figures, I, I don't think Kaya have, I don't think there's anything I would have done differently to this figure. It's a perfect looking John Rambo. It may not be something that of a size stand that everybody's going to be wanting to get on board. 112 is a little off of a size. I know usually people that are collecting either, either tend to collect 112 scale or like the seven inch scale. But you know, if you're into kind of collecting the 112 line, stuff that we've been getting with Mezco for years, uh, you know, I got to say, I, there's some serious competition now coming from the folks over at Haya. If again, like what we're seeing here with John Rambo from First Blood is, is any indication at all of what we're going to be getting with figures moving forward. I think 112 might have a little bit of competition on their hands from the folks over at Haya Toys. As we jump over the rotisserie here and John Rambo featured from First Blood, the exquisite super series figure I've got displayed currently with the M60 in one hand and then the ammunition belt wrapped around his other arm. With the figure being balanced like this, maybe being a bit of an issue, I've also used the display stand. It comes included with the figure after all. And if you're wondering then where all the extensive laundry list of the other accessories went to, they're all being conveniently stored inside the display stand. I do really think that Hayes really thought everything out when it comes to this figure. Not only giving us all the accessories we could ever really want from John Rambo from the First Blood film, but also as well that they also took the time to include things smartly, like a display stand that, yeah, could include all those other accessories. So it saves you really having to put everything back into a tray. I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to me actually displaying any of my figures on the shelf, a lot of times I either put them in bags, all those extra accessories, or I usually put them back in the packaging. And then if I change my mind down the road, how I want to display the figure, of course, I got to go down to the basement. Where did I put the packaging? Oh, here it is. I got to open it up, take whatever accessories I want to take out. Everything's done here. Everything is stored away where you need it. Easily accessible whenever the time comes that you want to change anything on Rambo. The only thing I might see myself maybe changing on him is probably maybe just the head sculpt. Not not, not really knowing which one I'm going to be displaying him with. Because again, like all three heads that they include with the figure are excellent. I, I don't, the only thing I probably won't ever decide to display the figure with is probably like, again, that smock that he has at the beginning with the rope tied around for his belt. I mean, it's nice that they included it, but for me, the, the classic look for Rambo from First Blood, at least, is the way that he's looking, at, looking like right now. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. Is this a figure you guys could see yourselves picking up? The exquisite super series, John Rambo, by the way, from First Blood, is slated to drop in April of 2024. Anybody who knows right now where we are in the calendar knows that we're already into, into April. So any, anyone that wants to get on the pre-order, you'll probably start to see these guys getting shipped out pretty soon, I would imagine, in the next couple of weeks. Big thank you once again to the folks over at Hyatt Toys that did provide this sample of the new First Blood exquisite super series John Rambo 112 scale figure that we could have a look at. I didn't also, by the way, tell you guys anything about the pricing. This guy is $79.99 or is about $80. $80 online. So I think he's comparable to the other 112 collective figures that we've also gotten from other figure companies. I feel, if anything, he might even have more accessories than obviously the, the, the 112 figures that the other company is doing right now. Yeah, definitely looking forward to having a look at the rest of the John Rambo figures. We're going to be also looking at First Blood Part 2. We're going to also be looking at First Blood Part 3. It's got to be a lot of cool Rambo reviews coming your way. The key to making sure you're not missing out any of that, first of all, is that first, if you guys enjoyed this video, well, throw it a like. Why not? Do me a, do me a solid. But if you want to stick around for more and the reviews of those other two Rambos, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that you're turning on the bell notification. And the most important thing, of course, that you're coming back here. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.